What I'm about to show you is the toothpick test. And after showing you guys this, I must warn you, you may never look at rackets the same. So don't say I didn't warn you, especially if you have a Wilson blade. All right, let's get into it. What's up guys, I'm making this video as a response or a follow-up to a video I did recently about parallel drilling. And in that video, I break down a lot of observations about parallel drilling that I feel like pretty much go unnoticed. And parallel drilling is kind of interesting because it's something that a lot of racket companies do. And at the beginning of when this became somewhat of a trend, it was somewhat marketed like heavily. And ever since then, all the benefits of parallel drilling seem to pretty much be forgotten by the entire market. I don't really see anybody talk about parallel drilling. I don't even see rackets really mention it anymore. Anyway, I have recently acquired a new preference or awareness for something that almost cancels out my preference for parallel drilling, which is interesting because my preference for that was so strong, but then somebody brought something to my awareness that made me reconsider certain things about parallel drilling. And I've narrowed it down to what that thing is and the easiest way to catch if that's gonna be a problem on a racket is with what I am calling the toothpick test. So I have two rackets here. This is the Shift 315 Wilson Shift, and this is the Wilson Pro Staff. It's an older model, the black and red one. And on the Shift, the toothpick will fit in any one of these grommets all the way through. It'll even have some wiggle room, right? So the toothpick is in here with enough room to wiggle around. Whereas the Pro Staff, I cannot get the toothpick in here at all. There are a couple grommets that are big enough, but they are shared holes, which is why they are a little larger. So in other words, all the grommets on the Wilson Shift are large enough to be shared holes. The other big difference is that basically none of the holes on the Pro Staff are parallel drilled, whereas almost all the holes on the Wilson Shift 315 are parallel drilled. So what happens when you're comparing a racket that is parallel drilled with grommet holes big enough to fit a toothpick in it versus a racket with basically no parallel drilling and tight enough grommets that a toothpick won't fit in it. That's what this video is gonna go into. I'm gonna tell you why that's important and why that's affected my preference for parallel drilling somewhat. I wanna give a shout out to a person who left a comment on my video that really brought this to my awareness, Lars. And before I go into a little bit more detail, I wanna show you guys two Instagram videos that I made. I did these videos on Instagram because they allow for 90 second reels as opposed to YouTube that does 60 second shorts. I was waiting until this video to do longer form content. So in this video, I'm just gonna to cut to it right now. Two videos that explain really well why this is so interesting and both important. You guys know how a racket in the crosses is woven like that? So just by looking at the racket, I can actually tell which side the string is wrapping around on. This gap between these two strings is bigger than it is on this side. Can you tell? Look at the opening here versus the opening there. It is clearly bigger. But this pattern alternates. See, it's bigger here, but smaller here. And then down here, it's bigger here, but smaller here. Bigger here but smaller here. See how this string is at the bottom of the grommet and the next one's at the top? And this one's at the bottom and the next one's at the top? Since this one's at the bottom and this one's at the top, I can tell that it's wrapping around this side of the frame, which is why this gap is smaller than the gap on this side, because on this side, the same set of crosses, it's not wrapping from that side of the frame. And this is true on pretty much every tennis racket. And I'm sorry if that bothers you to know that, but I wanted to share that. This is the toothpick test, and not every racket will pass. These rackets would pass. These ones would not. As you can see, the toothpick fits into this grommet, whereas on this racket, which is an older Pro Staff, it will not. In order to understand why this actually matters, you guys should see my previous post called the most OCD tennis post of all time. And that will show you guys how the crosses on the Blade 98 18 by 20 actually look really crooked once you see what I'm talking about. So when a toothpick does not fit inside of the grommet hole, it actually fixes that problem. And it's not too difficult to understand why. Let me show you. So if you look closely, you can see that the Selinko, the white racket, its grommets are much more open, but also thinner. The Pro Staff has a much smaller opening with a thicker, stronger plastic grommet opening. The Headspeed Pro is another example of a racket that would not pass the toothpick test. The crosses look a little crooked, right? Can you see that? 
And that's only possible because with a grommet opening that large, it allows the string to be pushed to the bottom or the top of it based on whether or not the cross is coming out and wrapping around from that side or not. The Head Gravity Pro and the Pure Aero 98 are both parallel drilled rackets with small grommet openings where you will not see crooked cross patterns. Crooked crosses drive me insane now. So that is now another thing that I look for when I'm getting a racket. And the quickest way to tell if that's gonna be a problem is with the toothpick test. Dude, is this guy just crazy? All right, so now that you guys have seen those two Instagram videos, you guys should be able to understand why the toothpick test matters and why grommet holes that are so large and parallel drilled allow for the crosses to have this alternating pattern of one side being more closed than the other side. And the blade, along with quite a few other rackets, display this really obviously. It's one of those details that you wouldn't normally look for, so most people would never catch them. But I think most people, once they have that detail pointed out to them, they can never unsee it. Funny enough, the Yonex Regna, which I still have for a little longer, is a racket that is slightly subject to the same issue that I revealed with the Blade 18x20, which also applies to the Blade 16x19. Older model blades, before parallel drilling was done on most of the racket, that isn't as much of a problem. And it's because those rackets have standard drilling as opposed to parallel drilling. So why would standard drilling fix that problem, whereas parallel drilling would create that problem? Now, that's a good question to ask, but it's not quite phrased correctly. Now, if you watch my video about parallel drilling, what I'm about to say about standard drilling was broken down pretty well in there, but essentially standard drilling can take a string angle from such an extreme point that it will essentially jam up the string against the edge of the grommet, no matter where on the racket it is. Now, the more extreme the angle that the racket is drilled at, the more true that is, which is why this alternating issue that I pointed out with the crosses can sometimes be more true around the sweet spot area on some rackets. However, if a racket is parallel drilled and it has big grommet openings, you can kind of see that across the entire racket. So sometimes a standard drilled racket, regardless of which side the same cross is on, will force the string down to the same edge of the grommet on both sides. That's why standard drilling sometimes isn't as susceptible to this alternating cross issue as parallel drilled grommets are. So this alternating cross issue is actually a problem that comes from two things. One of them does directly have to do with the size of the grommet hole. I'd actually say that that's the number one problem. But if you have a standard drilled racket, that will automatically eliminate that being the reason. So if the grommet has enough wiggle room for the string to move towards the top or the bottom of that grommet, then that's exactly what it will do, which is why you see that alternating pattern. So I suppose the final point in this video would be to actually ask, does this even matter though? Well, I don't necessarily know if it affects performance or not. This is just something that drives me insane visually to look at the racket, such as a Blade 1820, and just see how crooked the crosses look. That drives me insane. I think you could make an argument about how that creates an inconsistent distribution of tension across the string bed, but I don't necessarily know that you would feel that. Like if you compared that racket side by side with the same racket that compensated somehow for those crooked crosses, I don't know if you could tell from one to the next any kind of difference. That being said though, I do actually think when a string is sitting that loose in the grommet, there can be somewhat of a loss in feel because the string just isn't as tightly secured in the racket. But to be honest, the reason that I now have this as a preference is because it just drives me insane to look at that. So I guess in a perfect world for myself, a racket would have a majority of the holes parallel drilled and the grommet holes would be small enough that the visual effect of having crooked crosses is as minimized as possible. And there are actually quite a few rackets that offer this, such as the Gravity Pro and the Gravity MP. However, the Gravity Team does not. Those have some pretty big grommet holes for some reason. It's a very different, different grommet design entirely. The Pure Aero 98 is another good example of parallel drilled crosses and mains with a tight enough grommet hole that you can't see visually any kind of crooked spacing in the crosses. And I'm sure that there's more out there, but this is something that I'm looking for actively now. That being said, I would rather have a racket that is standard drilled and not have that issue than a racket that is parallel drilled and has that issue. But in a perfect world, I suppose I would have both.
And recently I actually had the Selenko white out and I noticed initially that that racket isn't parallel drilled. So I wrote it off entirely. I wasn't interested, but then I noticed this issue that some parallel rackets have, and it made me more intrigued with the Selenko white out again. So I ordered the Selenko white out and that was around the time that I figured out something like the toothpick test to reveal if a racket's gonna have this problem. And sure enough, I had a strung up version of that racket. Well, it was actually a demo at courtside, so I didn't take it home or anything, but I could see right around the sweet spot is that same alternating crosses pattern. And that just turned me off from the racket completely. And funny enough, I actually recently picked up the Blade 104 again, and I'm looking at that racket differently now. The cross holes are actually so small and they are parallel drilled. I can't see any kind of alternating pattern. And by the time that you get out of those parallel drilled crosses, it's coming in at such an angle that there again is no alternation happening towards the bottom of the racket. So the Blade 104, if these preferences are really important to you, could be a racket to consider, but that's kind of a funky racket. It's a 104, 16 by 19. It's a 27.5, which I was really into for a while. And you know, I'm still kind of dabbling with that, but that is an interesting racket. It's actually pretty stable because of the larger head size. It's a really good platform racket. I have a decent amount of weight again around the three and the nine area just to bring the swing weight up and the stability up. It's an interesting racket. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I'm just messing around with it again, mostly because my newly acquired set of preferences had me check that racket again. But there is one more racket over there I'll go grab real quick because uh, I'm kind of surprised that I'm checking this one out. But again, with my newly acquired set of preferences, it's not entirely surprising, but it's actually not parallel drilled. Let's go grab it. I have a microphone right here and my racket is just out of view. Let's see if you can guess what the racket is just from the sound. Can you hear this? Yeah, anyone, anyone have a guess? You hear that shaking, that rattling? Nobody really thinks about this brand out here, but it's freaking Pro Kenex. <laughs> and there's a lot of things about this racket that intrigued me off the bat. I'm sort of intrigued by this shaker stuff, but this technology intrigued me a little bit. So that's one thing, but it wasn't the main thing. All these beads will smack to the back of the racket when you accelerate it, right? And then on contact, bam! all these beads will slam from the back of the racket to the front and allegedly help you plow through the ball. So that's kind of an interesting idea. Every time I explain that to somebody, the first thing people say is, is that legal? I think it is. So more than that, actually, the racket intrigued me because it is a 27.5. I do still have my heart set on an extended length racket a little bit if I can make it work. And now I have the graffiti swing weight tool, which you've seen in some of my content to actually help me measure and put a lot of things about how a racket feels and why into context. So yeah, finding a stable extended length racket was kind of an issue. I need to talk about that in another video, but it mostly has to do with how when you extend a racket, the swing weight goes up a lot. So racket companies will often take quite a lot of weight out of the head to make the swing weight feel similar to a shorter length racket. And that has pretty dramatic effects on the stability of the racket, as you can expect. So on one hand, the racket looks more stable because the swing weight is high, but it's really only superficially high because the racket is longer. And when you're doing things like volleys or just on contact, you actually might notice a pretty big difference in stability. So I felt like one of the issues with extended length rackets was making it stable enough and still having it within a manageable swing weight. I think after a certain length, that becomes more and more impossible. That being said though, I am still a little bit determined to try and make an extended length racket work and not be so unstable that I can't play with it at the net well, which is where that bead technology might come into play a little bit and my tool might come into play a little bit. It'll allow me to weight things up and measure the swing weight and the twist weight and put that into perspective with how it feels, et cetera. And that way I can compare it with other rackets and you know, kind of see is it the length? Is it the swing weight, et cetera? But the main reasons I'm really intrigued by this racket are that the grommet holes, despite them not being parallel drilled, all of them are very tiny. Like the string just fits in here. There's really not any room for them to wiggle around and create that crooked cross effect that I hate so much now. And on top of that, it's a 16 by 20, somewhat densely spaced also. Like every single square is pretty much the same size as the next. So it's a really linear spacing. I like that. And it's a 16 by 20. So you got that extra cross string in there. So that's cool. It's a denser pattern. So it's less likely to break strings so quickly. So I can enjoy the durability of a denser string bed. But on top of that, you guys know I'm using Restring Zero, which is a super durable string. And I strung this one up actually with Restring Zero in the mains at 42 pounds with Toroline Wasabi in green, also 17 gauge at 42 pounds. 
And I say this all the time, but both of these strings are insanely durable because they are so slippery. They have so much snack back, snap back. Did I just say snack back? That's something else for sure. Anyway, if you guys want to get 10% off of Restring Zero, use my code in the link below. If you guys want to get 20% off of Toraline Wasabi, use my code below. And honestly, these strings work awesomely in a hybrid. Both of these strings, have probably the best spin potential on the market. If you guys don't believe how crazy the snapback is, look at some of my other videos. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can actually see how insane the snapback is on Restring Zero. Same thing goes for Toraline Wasabi though. However, I think Zero is a slightly stiffer string that holds its tension better. I think Restring Zero is actually one of the best tension maintenance strings you can get on top of already having such insane unparalleled snapback. However, Wasabi has insane levels of snapback too, but it's a little bit softer. It doesn't hold tension quite as well, but it is a little bit softer. So it's cool to have that in the crosses. Maybe brings you a little bit more comfort and a little bit more liveliness to a string bed with Restring Zero. So anyway, we're trying it out. I've been having fun hybriding these two strings in a couple of rackets, and this is my second time stringing up this racket, but it's my first time stringing it up with this hybrid. So we'll see what I think. I need to give myself enough time to get past the honeymoon phase of hitting with this racket and see if I really like it. But it does meet a lot of my preferences. And it's interesting how your preferences can evolve over time. That's another point I wanted to make in this video because I was so adamant about parallel drilling once I discovered it, but I found a flaw that can be exposed due to parallel drilling. And it made me look at parallel drilling in kind of a negative light. But then I found a solution to that flaw which is having smaller grommet holes. And there are racket companies out there that are making small parallel drilled holes on their racket. And I mentioned a couple of those, the Babolat Pure Aero 98, the Head Gravity Pro and the Head Gravity MP. I know that there's more out there, but if you guys care about this stuff and you guys are willing to be that guy going into a racket shop or whatever and doing the toothpick test, cause that's a non-invasive way to find out if a racket's gonna have that problem. You can look for yourself. You can see if a racket is parallel drilled. You can see with a toothpick, if the grommet openings are so wide that it's gonna cause that alternating crooked cross pattern that bothers me so much. And I know it bothers some other people, but as somebody who has really strong and somewhat maybe ridiculous opinions, I do think that these opinions actually matter. And I think on the manufacturing level, racket companies do pay attention to these things and they do matter to the racket companies. It's no coincidence that the Pure Aero 98 has small grommet openings that are also parallel drilled. It's no coincidence. And I'd say the same thing goes for the Head Gravity Pro and the Head Gravity MP. And now that I've made these observations, I feel like I can actually understand a little bit better why some companies don't bother with parallel drilling. I used to think it was just lazy manufacturing, lazy engineering to some degree, but I also like to give benefit of doubt. And now I'm thinking maybe some of those companies aren't pushing parallel drilling because, well, some people just don't care, but objectively rackets that are standard drilled are less susceptible to the issue of having crooked crosses. So that very well may explain why some rackets are parallel drilled and other rackets aren't parallel drilled, even by the same company. So yeah, there we are. That's where I'm at with what I look for in a racket now. And I think sometime in the very near future, I'll make a video just breaking down all the things I look for in a tennis racket because that should be an interesting video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Be sure to check out my links below for some cool discounts on amazing products. I don't endorse anything that I don't use myself or love. All the links below with the discounts are there to hook you guys up on products I fully back. And that's a cool way for you guys to save some money on products that I fully recommend. And it also helps out the channel. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi. And I guess that's all for now. I will see you guys in a future video. Bye.